Hello and welcome. In this video, I have assumed that you have already installed the database and created the server actions. Carrying on from there, we will now create our products page. The final page will look like this. I have not gone into great detail on page design so that I can keep this tutorial as short as possible. With the index page open in Wepler, add the usual frameworks to your page. This index page was created before we entered our preferences in the site setup. Any new page that is created will automatically contain the frameworks. Next we'll add the navigation bar. After the navigation bar, add a main element and a footer. You will notice that the footer is not at the bottom of our page. We will fix that now. Add the style sheet to our page. For two of our selectors, namely HTML and body, we need to go into code view. Select the HTML tag and click the insert new rule button. Within the HTML selector, add minimum height and overflow properties. Select the body tag and click the insert new rule button. Here you will notice that the ID of the body tag has been selected. We want a more generic selector so that we can apply it to all of our pages. Click style.css which will open our style sheet. Change the offending selector to body. Save the style sheet and close it. Within the body selector, add display, flex direction and minimum height properties. Back in Design View, select Main and the Style Sheet. Within the Main Selector, add the Flex property. You will notice that the footer has been moved to the bottom of the page. Go back to the App Structure panel. Click on Main and add a container, row and column. Within the column, add a heading. Double click the heading to change the wording. We will now add a data source. Select app and add server connect. Now 
name the data source and bind it to the server action. For the next part, we need to go into mobile view. This is because Bootstrap is mobile first, meaning style rules in mobile view will be carried through to larger screens until a new style rule applies. This will be evident as we proceed. Choose mobile view and add a row after the heading row. We will make the row a repeat children area. Name the repeat row and bind it to our products query. Within the row, add a column, and we notice that two columns have been created, one for each of our two products in the database. This is the repeat area doing its job. These two columns are too narrow for our mobile view, so enlarge them. Within the column, add a card. Select the card title and under Dynamic Attributes, choose Display Inner Text. The value for the inner text will be the product name from our database. Select a paragraph and under Dynamic Attributes, select Inner HTML. This is because the description will most likely be created using the Medium Editor, which includes HTML elements. The value for the paragraph will be the product short description. Remove the button. Create another paragraph to display the product price. And on the dynamic attributes, select inner text with a value of product price. Select the card body and add a card footer after it. Within the card footer, add a button. Style the button and turn it into a block level element. You will have noticed that the button does not extend to the full extent of the footer. Choose the card footer and remove the padding. Double click the button and change the wording. Choose tablet view and notice that our columns are too wide. Choose the column and drag it so that it is four coals wide. You will notice that one card is taller than the other. To fix that, give the card a height of 100%. Now for larger screens. Drag the column to three calls wide.
Select the image and under Dynamic Attributes choose the image source with a value of image thumb. We'll add a few final touches to our design and fix one thing that I had forgotten, namely to show the price as a dollar value. In the next video, we will add functionality to the Add to Cart button. Thank you for watching.